Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Jeff Borick. If you enjoyed the content, please continue to subscribe up above on the easy to use widget at the end or down below on the easy to use sub button to help us get to 200 by the end of February. Really appreciate your love and support thus far. This is going to be on the top 15 quarterbacks in the NFL right now, in my opinion. My buddy and I had a conversation about Jimmy G uh, yesterday, and it kind of inspired me to see who actually is in the top 15 right now because the the point we were kind of getting to was the back 15 or like 17 down has kind of been weak performance wise talent wise like for the Trevor Lawrence's of the world for people that talk about the Wilson's of the world etc obviously Zach not Russell Wilson we know Russell Wilson's a stud um like maybe over time yeah they could take the jump but if we're going off a of performance you can't put those guys in the top 15 now talent wise is like a different thing than basing it off a of performance so with this list, what I did is I looked at their last three years on Pro Football Reference and then kind of made it that way. And then some guys, just because of their freakish talent, yeah, they're going to get like Patrick Mahomes, for example. They're going to get elevated because of that on top of their stud level play. Uh, so that's why Patrick Mahomes, as I lean into that, is numero uno because he's been playing absolutely fantastic won a Super Bowl so early in his career for a coach that that was literally the thing he needed on his resume. Patty got it for him, and he obviously has been an MVP in this league uh, already. And to me, yes, Aaron Rodgers obviously has more of the career track, but Patrick Mahomes, if we're combining what he's done, 50 touchdowns, 26, 38, 37, um, only 12, 5, 6, and 13 interceptions the last year. Uh, in his starting years. Uh, he's been fantastic in the Pro Bowl each year of his starting years. Uh, he was a first-team All-Pro in 2018. He probably should have been that um, in other years as well, but that is what it is. Some of that voting's stupid, and guys don't get it that should, but that is what it is. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is an absolute stud. Uh, he can make absolutely ridiculous plays where he's the most overall talented quarterback and also as the numbers to back it up, where the guy that's really close to him, um, that is right behind him, that of course won this year's MVP, is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, of course, also, though, the last time we saw him, <clears throat> did not have a good game, as even the man that loves him, Stephen A., admitted he was hot trash. Uh, so, But he is still second um, on the list, because we know Aaron Rodgers obviously played to an MVP level this season, and then not much more really needs to be said about why the GOAT Aaron Rodgers, who's probably the best, not probably, who is the best resume quarterback now uh, in the game, in the top uh, 15, because Tom Brady retired. So uh, he has the best overall career numbers. Now, not playoff resume, obviously, but when you include the regular season, uh, and you go by his numbers and his MVP finishes, obviously, and then obviously winning his MVP again, uh, another one this year. Uh, that's going to really help Rodgers in terms of having the best resume when it comes to quarterbacks because all these other guys are pretty young. Or Matthew Stafford, who was on the damn Detroit Lions uh, for most of his career, so that ain't going to help him out. So when we go down further... I would say the third and fourth, I was kind of flipping back and forth between Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. Uh, for right now, I would say it's Josh Allen. Josh Allen, uh, as his numbers are coming up, had 36 touchdowns to 15 interceptions and over 63 completion percentage, over 4,400 yards. Um, he also, ever since uh, starting in his career, once he got to that second starting season, he's been over 20 touchdowns since he was 20 and 9 that season, 37, 10, 36, and 15. So he's really elevated his game, was second in the MVP last year in 2020. Uh, so uh, Josh Allen, he also has led eight comebacks and 11 game winning drives. So you have the check mark in if he's able to get it done for you at the end of the game. Uh, Josh Allen would be third for me. Lamar Jackson, who obviously is the guy that's. I would say out of all of these dudes is by far um, the most just freakishly talented because he's underrated as a uh, thrower, in my opinion, where Lamar Jackson sometimes, not sometimes, actually a lot of times, I think, by the media 
gets projected as someone that really can't throw the ball with. This year, the Ravens were different because they were kind of a, a mediocre team in shambles with different injury issues and yada, yada, yada. But if you look at the years prior, and like I said, I'm going by the past three seasons, Lamar Jackson was a freaking tank. 36-6 and six when the Ravens had everything going for him. He won the MVP. 26-9. and nine. This year, even though he wasn't able to have the best passing numbers, he was able to figure out a will and a way to keep his team in the game a lot because he is so freakishly good at being able to, even when there is a damn QB spy, get to the side, run, and just absolutely pick up a hundred and some yards that way. And then, but the difference is, which I don't jive with people saying, oh, well, he's just good at running some of the people that say that. He ain't. Because once he starts doing that, then he starts picking you with the passes because he opened up the damn field by being the entire team at time by running and then passing the freaking rock. So Lamar Jackson is fourth. Uh, Joe Burrow, who obviously has last year where he had the injuries, was carrying the Bengals before the injuries, then they faltered. And then this year, so he doesn't have necessarily the three-year thing, obviously, but those two years are mighty. Obviously, he got his team to the damn Super Bowl after they barely won any games last year. And I think they have a good chance to win it, to be honest, but I'll do a preview on that later. Joe Burrow is the fifth quarterback in the ranking. Justin Herbert, I would say, is six because that one goes off of the numbers he puts up and also just I say we know that dude is a freaking beast that if you can get a better team around him and also maybe just actually let a coach stick around long enough, then you are, are going to have a very, very, very top-end quarterback here is just get the rest of the damn team around him, stop beating around the bush, and have Justin Herbert get more protection, get him more weapons, and then you're going to be set. Uh, Stafford, also get also get a better defense if you're the tra- Chargers. Stafford, I would say, is seventh, because Stafford, the only reason I don't think Matthew Stafford was ranked this high in list in the past is literally just because he was on the damn Detroit Lions. And when you're on the damn Detroit Lions, you kind of have a ceiling on where uh, you can go. Like, you're not you're not going to be able to go to the almighty of the 47, or 41, excuse me, touchdowns and 17 picks he had this year. Uh, well, yeah, at the end of the season, did he turn into a little bit of a pick trouble? Sure, but that's because look at the damn weapons he has. And Stafford has the arm of a freaking Greek god, so obviously he's going to throw it, try to throw it down the field, and uh, take some chances when you have Odell Beckham and and those cats out there, and even Higby as a tight end, so like, it it, it makes sense that that, that this year he got into maybe a little bit more trouble than his consistently 10 to 11, about average 13 interception seasons he's had since 2015 at the highest, but then he's locked it in, he's been terrific in the postseason this year. Obviously, he's the other guy that got his team to the Super Bowl. It was just about getting Matthew Stafford on a champion, on a, excuse me, championship contender team, and now he's there, and now he has to be in that top seven. A guy, again, filled with the protection around him, build a better team around him, falls into the Justin Herbert category. I think he would be higher even potentially on this list. Kyler Murray, because he's extremely talented, can throw the rock can run with the best of them, get him better protection, get him a better team around him as a whole, and I think he's going to be a guy that has a great chance to move up this list going the next season. And then Russell Wilson, I would say, didn't have a good year this year. We know why that is, though. Everybody that saw even one to two Seattle Seahawks games can see why Russell Wilson didn't have a good year this year. And uh, he's still a top-nine quarterback. His talent is absolutely ridiculous. And, um... He, he's, I think if he goes to a team that actually has a good line, like even say if he does go to the Eagles, um, he would be right back to being Russell Wilson next year. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Now, of course, this man, we have to see what happens uh, with the legal battles. But again, he didn't play this season, so you don't have this season. But I'm going off of pure talent and what he has and what he showed from the first two seasons. From the first two seasons. From the past two seasons. <laughs> before um, leaving the game uh, for his legal battles, and I'm not going to say my opinions on that or anything. But um, 
he is ranked 10th because we know when you see Deshaun out there, you see Deshaun slinging the ball uh, with the arm strength he has and also, obviously, the juke ability he has to run with the absolute ridiculous throwing ability he has. Like, like that's why I think Lamar Jackson gets so underrated in his throwing ability because, to me, he's a mini Deshaun, and people don't give him the credit where he doesn't throw to the level of Deshaun, don't get me wrong, but he also hasn't been in the league as long as Deshaun yet, so he could get to that level even next year. So that's why I think sometimes that's why the race car comes in. We, we have to stop that with the black quarterbacks and saying they might not be as squeaky clean of throwers, where the only white guy that I think ever really got that treatment of late was Josh Allen until he went off after that 20 touchdown season he started having in the 30s, like I explained earlier, the last two years, and then he started going ballistic. Uh, this man at 11th, I think, is more because of the weapons around him and taking advantage of it. Uh, I will um, give that credit, and uh, my buddy was talking to kind of what leaned towards those lines. I'm not sure if that's his take, though, but Prescott, I would say, is just 11th because of his numbers have been good. Is he as good as his numbers say if he was a guy that had to carry a, say, more average team or like a, say, the Bengals team that doesn't have any protection where Prescott at times gets flustered uh, when he kind of has guys coming at him consistently. Joe Burrow doesn't. So uh, that's a that's a question there. But I think just by default, like I said at the start of this video, the back half of these quarterbacks nowadays is kind of weak. Uh, 12 is kind of an also by default, but also he puts up very good uh, passing numbers and is one of the more better deep passers if you can get down the field for him. So I think that would just put him at 12 by default. Would be Kirk Cousins, maybe with a more um, offensive-minded coaching in there. He can come a little bit more to fruition and actually play better uh, next season to get to being kind of on there by default just because there's not enough. <clears throat> uh, top 15 level talent in my mind so you have to put him but based on for the numbers he had in the last three years on there by default which um Derek Carr um he he to me because of the way uh he's been in it actually I'll kind of take that back a little bit on Kirk Cousins I guess the way he's performed with like I said, he 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 probably would be at a top fifteen level just because of the way the current league is. Um, the, his stats would equate to being a top fifteen level over these new cats that came in, and none of them really had that good of a rookie season uh, for this draft class. And then two is still developing. I think he has a lot of talent, but still needs to get it going. And now he has a whole new coaching staff down there that he has to figure out as well if they even give him a chance to do such. So. There's a lot of guys I think have more talent than some of these guys, like overall talent, but I can't put them on the list yet because they haven't performed to the level of being able to be put on that list yet. So if it was based off of talent, sure, they would have been put on this list, as like I said at the beginning of the video, if it was based just off of what I think their peak talent level could be if they put it together. But since they didn't put it together yet, I can't put them in the top 15 over the Derek Carrs of the world, the Ryan, even the Ryan Tannehills of the world who's got his tight ends. Uh, to the championship game just because he protects the ball enough and keeps it simple enough and is kind of a better version of Jimmy G because, yeah, he might throw more picks than Jimmy G, but that's also because Ryan Tannehill is better at being able to space the ball around the field and actually has, if you look at his numbers, I looked at them over the past couple of years, more games over 250 yards by a landslide than Jimmy Garoppolo, who typically has a lot of games under that where he's just not that much needed in the passing game. And if he is, usually he's not going to be the guy to carry your team over the hump. He sometimes misses those throws. The credit I'll give to Jimmy G is he's tough as nails and does play through injuries like he did this year. I'll definitely give him that credit. That's why I think he's going to continue to get jobs and just kind of be a placeholder quarterback for a team because uh, even if he gets injured, you know until he really has to come out like we've seen in his career because he has been out a lot. Um, he's going to try to play through it at least. Uh, so we have, like I said, Cousins 12. Carr 13, Tannehill 14, and then this man I think has to be above Jimmy G just because of his career uh, and even the last three years. He's been in the mid-20s uh, to upper 20s, past 25 touchdowns, and then this year he literally had identical numbers, touchdown to interceptions to Garoppolo. Matt Ryan to me is still above Jimmy Garoppolo for damn sure. Uh, 
where I would definitely take Matt Ryan if I'm building a team, and that's kind of what it, what that's what that kind of inspired me to do this video because my friend and I just had a conversation about Jimmy G, um, and I wouldn't think he'd be in the top fifteen. Where is he out of it? Uh, that's something we would have to see as I continue to write down these quarterbacks if he's in the sixteen to twenty range or if he's in the what I would think just based off of what I watch eyeballs wise would be the twenty and down range. But based off of how people have performed, he might by default be a little bit higher than that because this list, again, is based off of how you performed in your last couple seasons. We did it by three years, but for guys like Joe Burrow who didn't play for those three seasons and others, that they were just peak level for the other seasons, then you're going to still put them uh, on the list. And then for guys that kind of just had the very good steady Eddie seasons that helped us uh, squad to be able to be good to get to the playoffs and have a little bit more of an oomph to be able to pass, especially Matt Ryan has more of an oomph to be able to pass it around. Tannehill is more of a guy that just doesn't, that can control the ball, I think, a little bit better um, and be more of a, like, just great game manager that just knows how to play, play action, control the passing game. Usually he's one of the better, if I'm not mistaken, play action uh, quarterbacks in the league when they mix that in there in Tennessee. So, uh, that's the top 15. Uh, I would say that's a pretty solid top 15, but to me, I hope some of these young guys come along because the back end of this top 15 to me is like, they're good quarterbacks, but they're kind of the old school, just boring, stand in the pocket guyers. And I would like to see the Lawrences that have the abundance talents, the tours that have the abundance talents that can do it all, have a rocket and uh, can can move as well in the pocket. The Wilsons that I think have a lot more talent than he showed. He's also on the damn Jets, so that doesn't help. Uh, so I think I want to see these guys take big jumps. Uh, Hertz, I hope, takes a big jump with the Eagles. Um, I want to see young guys take a bigger jump because they have more pizzazz to their game, along with being guys that I think are going to develop throwing to at least the level of the Cousins or at definitely at least the levels for some of them of the Tannehills of the world for damn sure to be very good game managers that can at least get to the Tannehill level. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. That would be my top 15 quarterbacks for heading into the Super Bowl. I figured it would be a good time to put out the top 15 quarterbacks going off of their numbers from the last three years, unless if you're a guy like Joe Burrow, who's just an absolute monster and had great play last year before he got injured due to bad O-line play, and then this year carried his team along with good running back play and good defensive play uh, to the Super Bowl. But when push came to shove, if you needed Joe Burrow to get it done in the game, he did every single time. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy your weekend.